everybody, welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Jess. Here on my channel, I do make plant videos, I do some gardening videos, as well as home decor and DIYs. So if that is something that you're into, please consider subscribing and also be sure to hit the bell so that you won't miss any of my uploads. So today I am back with my February plant spotlight. I did get a lot of great feedback on January's plant spotlight. If you guys missed that video, I'll leave it up in the cards and also down in the description box. So be sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for leaving such great feedback. You guys did request that I continue with the series. So here we are and February's plant spotlight is going to be this gorgeous Calathea to my right here. So let me see if I can actually pick her up for you guys. I'm gonna set her on this tray because she is a little bit wet. I just watered her yesterday. So here she is. Her name is Calathea Illustrious. And you guys, I think she is just so, so stunning. I will insert some close up footage so you guys can see how gorgeous her leaves are. If you all are familiar with Calathea, she does look very similar to the Calathea medallion, um, but her leaf just has a little bit more of an elongated shape to them and also a lighter green tone. So if you take a closer look, she does have a pink vein going down the center, which can change color just depending on the lighting that you have it in. It may appear more white, um, or if you have it in more light, it may be a more pink or red vein. Um, and then of course she has the lime green going down the center, the dark green surrounding her edges, and then that bright white feathered pattern highlights to the center of her leaves. It's so, so pretty. I think it looks like a watercolor, like peacock feathered painting, in my opinion. And then, of course, she does also have the maroon purple undersides to her back of her leaves, as most Calatheas do. Um, so I actually picked her up in Charlotte, North Carolina, from a nursery called Oakdale Nurseries. If you guys, again, missed that shopping video, I will leave that. Y'all, they were fully stocked, so I might add that to my repertoire of favorite nurseries to shop. So yeah, definitely check out Oakdale if you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Um, so let me actually, I'm gonna set her down so I can talk to you a little bit more about this plant. So she is part of the Marantisia family. She is a Maranta or pear plant, if you will. Um, so her leaves do do, do do, do do, y'all know what I mean, the praying hands <laughs> motion where the leaves will fold up at night and lay down or flatten out throughout the day. So if you see your plant moving in different positions, there's nothing wrong, it's normal. This plant does uh, move and the leaves will follow the sunlight throughout the day. So while we're on that topic, I'll just jump right into the lighting. Um, so this Calathea, as well as most Calatheas, are known to be low light plants. Um, so you want to want to put this in a more of a filtered, indirect light. Um, or if you're growing it outdoors, you'll want to put it in a full shade location. She is hardy zones 11 to 12. So if you are in that area, you can grow her outdoors. Just be sure to put her in full shade. Um, if you are not in 10 or 11 zones, then you will probably will be growing this as a house plant or in a greenhouse situation. Um, so if you have it indoors, again, put it in a filtered light or low, bright, indirect light-ish situation. You just don't want to put it in full direct sunlight because her leaves are very sensitive. They can burn easily. And also, if it's given too much light, the patterns of calatheas will start to fade. So you definitely want to keep her leaves looking this beautiful, ornate, vibrant color. So low light for this plant. Next, let's talk about growth. So these plants are grown in nature as understory plants, which means they grow under the large canopies and forests. Um, so this one grows about two feet wide and about three feet tall. So it's a more compact plant. Um, it is a moderately fast grower if you give it the proper growing conditions. This plant can grow pretty fast. Um, it does also bloom. So I will insert a picture of what the blooms look like so you guys can see it. Um, it looks gorgeous, you guys, especially against her beautiful pattern of her leaves. Y'all, I just love this, this feathered highlight on her leaves. I think it's so, so pretty, and her leaves are just so large and lush. Next, let's talk about temperatures. So as I stated, this is a tropical plant, so you will want to make sure that you're growing this in a nice, warm, humid environment. They grow best in 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. They can tolerate temperatures as low as 60 degrees, but I wouldn't 
put it in anything lower than that. Um, these plants are very, very sensitive to the cold. They're also very sensitive to dry conditions. So again, put this in a nice warm environment. Um, so speaking of temperature, I'm just gonna roll right into humidity. So you guys, Calatheas love high humidity and moisture. So you definitely wanna try and keep your humidity levels as high as possible. Um, some of the ways that you can improve the humidity or increase the humidity around your Calatheas is to group them together. Um, you can also set them on a tray of pebbles and just fill that pebble tray with water. And then as the water evaporates, it'll create kind of a humid environment around your Calathea. Um, very similar, you can also just take little jugs and fill those with water or bowls and set them around. And as that water evaporates, it will increase the humidity level as well. Um, you can also mist your Calathea, um, but I, they're very sensitive to the type of water that you want to use, which I'll get into in a second. Um, but if you are misting your Calathea, you don't wanna have any water sitting on top of the leaves. So if you do feel the need to mist, try and go up underneath the plant and mist upward to hit the bottoms of the leaves. You don't want mist sitting on the top of your Calathea. I personally have mine sitting in a room with a humidifier. I actually have four humidifiers running in my house. Um, just because I have really high ceilings, I have a lot of square footage, and I also have very dry gas heat running. So I do have four humidifiers. They are all set at 60% humidity throughout the winter time to keep my Calatheas looking as pristine as possible. So yeah high humidity and warm um, conditions for your Calathea illustris. Next, I'm gonna talk about the watering. So Calatheas are very, very sensitive to the type of water that you use. They're also very thirsty plants. So you will wanna make sure that you're watering your plant regularly, um, but just be careful on the type of water that you're using. You definitely wanna make sure that you steer clear from using tap water on your Calatheas. Just depending where you live, most tap water does include a lot of fluoride and chlorine and other chemicals that will burn the leaves of your Calathea. Um, so you wanna make sure that using either filtered water, bottled water, um, distilled water, or rainwater. Rainwater is probably the best option. Um, I personally use my Brita filter to water my Calatheas. I will also occasionally go out and buy some distilled water bottles to water them, but definitely do not use any tap water not even to mist my Calathea. So careful on the watering. Um, they, again, like to stay moist, but they don't want to be soggy or boggy where it can cause root rot for your plant. So I guess that will roll right into soil. We just rolling right along, y'all. So again, these do like moisture, so you will want to use a mixture that is water retaining, but also light and airy. Um, they don't like their roots to sit in anything too heavy that can bog down the soil and cause a root rot situation. Calatheas have a very frail uh, root system. They don't have those big robust roots. They're actually really small, frail, hairy roots. So you'll want to make sure that your, your soil medium retains a lot of moisture but is also very well drained. So use something that is peat based um, maybe throw in a little bit of sphagnum moss to retain moisture, but also toss in a little bit of perlite, maybe some orchid bark to aerate that soil and just help it drain a little bit better. So next is fertilizer. Um, again, Calatheas are very, very sensitive to fertilizer. You guys, these leaves burn so easily, um, but you will want to make sure that you are fertilizing your plants spring through fall. That is their growing season. You can use any all-purpose, well-balanced fertilizer, any 10-10-10, 20-20-20 liquid fertilizer. Um, just be sure to dilute that extremely. So whatever the label says, cut that in half. Um, you can even dilute it by 75% if you want to because they're very, very sensitive and they can burn. So definitely fertilize spring through fall. <laughs> Toxicity, so this plant is actually non-toxic, you guys. Finally, a house plant that is not toxic to humans or fur babies. So you can set this plant on the floor, you can hang it in a hanging basket, you can set it on a shelf, put it wherever, and if your pets get a hold of it, you don't have to worry about them getting too sick. Now, you definitely don't wanna set it out and just let them go to town chomping on the plant, um, but yeah, it's not toxic to our little fur babies. I'm excited about that. As far as pruning goes, Calathea lustrous does not require a lot of pruning. Um, you definitely will wanna make sure that you go in and just cut off any brown or dried up leaves. Also, when you're making your cuts, um, let's see if I can rotate her 
I might have to zoom in or do a close-up shot for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. So the new growth on these plants actually comes out of the previous leaf or stem. So if you have to cut off a yellow leaf or a dying leaf, you'll just want to make sure that you're cutting at the base of the leaf, right at the top where the stem meets the leaf, um, just so that you're not cutting it all the way at the base and risk cutting any new growth that may be growing or emerging from the stem. Okay, so as far as repotting goes, um, calatheas again have a very frail root system, so you don't really have to repot this one too often, maybe every one to two years. Um, just be very delicate when you're repotting. Again, their roots are very frail and hair-like, so just in my experience, they don't like the roots to be tousled with or like unwound and knock a lot of dirt off them. I literally just pick up the plant and put it in the next pot, and I just go up one pot size from what it was in before. Okay, let's talk about pests, y'all. I hate this topic, but we have to address it. Unfortunately, calatheas are prone to our number one pet nemesis, which is going to be the fungus gnat. So we know that fungus gnats like to grow and breed in rich, moist soil, which is what the calathea illustrious loves to grow and thrive in. Um, so yeah, you may see your occasional fungus gnat break out. They are also very prone to getting spider mites and thrips, you guys. Um, I personally have not had an issue with seeing mealybugs or scale or aphids on uh, calathea, um, but I did read that they can be prone to getting those pests as well. Um, I will leave a link up in the cards as well as in the description box for you guys to check out my debugging video on how to care for spider mites. Um, that does go for spider mites, thrips, aphids, mealybugs. It covers how to treat for all of those if you need help with that. So yeah, they are prone to pests. Um, but if you do have a pest outbreak, just be sure to isolate that plant away from all of your other plants so they don't spread. And then just make sure you are going through and cleaning every single leaf and stem thoroughly. Y'all, it is hot. Okay, so I've got this big old sweater on. I've got these humidifiers going, all this humidity in the air. I did just cut four inches off of my hair, y'all, and I just feel like it is swelling by the second with all this humidity. But... Anywho, I think I covered everything. What did I missing? Oh, propagation. So propagation for this plant is done best by division. Uh, calatheas actually have rhizomes that spread horizontally underneath the soil. So the best way to propagate this is just take a division cutting or you can go in and break up those rhizomes and just plant little plantlets to propagate your plant. So last thing that I just wanted to touch on a little bit is problems or issues you may notice with your calathea, one being curled or wilted leaves, which is normally an indicator of a dryness issue. Um, typically, if you see curling leaves, that can be one of two things. Um, the first one being that if you see your leaves curling up, it may be getting too much light. So calatheas can tend to curl up their leaves just to protect themselves from that harsh sunlight to kind of shield and protect their gorgeous patterns of their leaves. So you may be getting too much light and just move it into a more lower light situation if you notice curling. Um, also curling can be an indicator of dryness. It may not have enough humidity and it may also need to be watered. Um, typically your leaves will curl up first and then they will wilt. So once you see the wilting, we know you need to water your plant. And again, just be sure to water it with filtered, bottled, rainwater, or distilled water. Another thing you may notice with your calathea is yellowing leaves or black base of the leaves. That means that you are overwatering your plant. Your soil is retaining too much moisture, so you'll definitely want to go in and aerate that soil to get some airflow to the roots so that your plant is not root rotting and causing those yellow leaves. Um, also with that, you may also notice some spotting or leaf spots on your leaves. That also can be two different indicators. Um, one being it may be a fungal issue, which is a little bit more difficult to diagnose. Um, the other is usually a watering issue. If you leave water, specifically tap water, sitting on your leaves or if you're misting your leaves too often and leave that water accumulating on the leaves, it will actually burn the leaf and cause a leaf spot. So just be careful not to leave water or moisture sitting on the leaves for too long. So that is pretty much it, you guys. I think I covered everything. If I left anything out, please leave a comment or any questions that you have down below. I'll be more than happy to address those. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about the Calathea Illustrious. 
if you see one in your stores, definitely pick one up, you guys. They are such ornate, stunning plants. All calatheas, I think, are just gorgeous, you guys. They can be a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually really easy to care for these plants. Give them some low but decent light, high humidity, consistent watering, and be sure to use filter, distilled, or rain water when you're watering these plants. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope it was helpful, informational. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.